We have explained how to use local volume constraint to generate bone-inspired microstructures. Uh, we also develop a lot of technique to solve a lot of problem in additive manufacturing. It concerns about support structures. So as explained in this comparative image, when it's overhang angle of 60 degrees, you need support structures. And this support structures is a waste of material and it also means labor intensive post processing. We distinguish two types of support structures. Suppose we want to fabricate a 2D bonding model. Uh, we distinguish two types of supports. Uh, support that is outside of the model. It is a waste of material, but it could be removed in principle. If we have a cavity inside, this cavity is not self-supporting, so it also needs supports. This supports, however, unless we cut the model into two halves. We couldn't remove it. You might wonder why do we want to remove it. Uh, so in our first example about how to optimize shapes to balance, to float, uh, the same example here, if we want to optimize this a shape that is composed of three spheres, three spheres, the center of gravity is outside of the contact region, so the first one is not balanced. By optimization, we could say the right side should be removed. This shifts the center of gravity to the middle. It would balance, but if we have support structures that is not removed, this center of gravity will be moving to the right hand side again, then it would become unbalanced. And this is the reason we look into how we design uh, infill structures that are self-supporting so it can remain in a structure. The basic idea is to use rhombic shapes or rotated rectangular shapes. So if we have a cavity like this, uh, we consider adaptive subdivision as design variable. Uh, this subdivision is visualized on the right-hand side. So no matter how we subdivide, or well, sorry, uh, no matter at which location we subdivide, this aspect ratio is the same, which means if the first rhombic cell is self-supporting, the subdivided rhombic cell is self-supporting as well. So this is a very good property, and uh, the implication is we could focus on optimization without worrying about support structures anymore. So this shows how this principle works. So if we are given this bunny, we first initialize it by an adaptively refined rhombic structure. And this rhombic structure is refined along the boundary to accommodate geometric details. If we have some external force applied, for instance, if we have a load applied on the back pointing downwards, by optimization, we determine which rhombic cells have to be subdivided. This subdivision will increase the strength and stiffness. But since all these structures, they have the same aspect ratio, they maintain self-supporting. The optimization uh, principle is comparable to the standard topology optimization. The difference is now the design variable is different. In standard topology optimization, the design variable is the material uh, per element, and here the design variable is subdivision of each individual cell. These three images shows the stress distribution of intermediate structures during optimization. As you see in the optimization, where is my mouse? In the optimization, this region has is more important for this particular load condition, so it is adaptively refined. As it refines, it becomes solid, but the other region is less important, so it remains very big to save material. If we compare this 
structure with the uniform infill we could observe. In the uniform infill, we have stress concentration at this point, but with this topology optimization, this region of stress is relatively small. And the benefit of using this rhombic structure is it is self-supporting, so it could be fabricated without support structures. We did a mechanical test comparing adaptive this subdivided rhombic structure and the uniform structure. And we apply the same amount of force, 62 Newton, and we can observe with this optimized structure the displacement is 2.11 millimeter. And without optimization, the uniform structure has a displacement of 4 millimeter, which is almost twice as large as the optimized version. Uh, we also um, press this structure to get the same displacement of 3 mm and the optimized version could support a load of 90 Newton while this uniform one is deformed under the force of 48, uh, 58 Newton. So this confirms this optimization improves the stiffness a lot 